And here we are back again with the Moran's 2265B receiver. In the last episode I kind of fixed the louder channel of the two and the main amplifier by hooking a second resistor up across the feedback resistor and consequently lowering the value of that. The thing that I didn't take into account because, well, honestly I just simply didn't know about it, that very resistor also has a major influence on the stability of the circuit and so the thing that I didn't realize while I was talking during the last scene of the previous uh, repair video, the amplifier had started oscillating. It, would, uh, it was a low frequency oscillating. It would just kind of go... Just this kind of motor boating. The heatsink was absolutely boiling. Like, you could not even get close to it anymore. It was so hot. So that was a bit of a fail. But at least I now know that uh, we're definitely not dealing with any sorts of uh, thermal problems in that main amplifier because, uh, well, even at uh, approximately 150 degrees, it was still, still working aside from that little oscillation thing. Anyway, um, the thing that we're going to do today is uh, we're going to take the main amplifier out yet again and replace those transistors yet again. I spent another 10 euro on a load of transistors as you can see. We got a bunch of uh, BD-140s. These were supposed to be BD-139s but the store, the electronic store, was still sold out. I bought their last BD-139 like half a year ago. That's the one that's sitting in there. They still haven't ordered any new ones, so they gave me these. I'm not sure if they are any good for what I want to do with them, so eh, better be careful. Then, believe it or not, they actually do have the original transistors that this thing came with. We got uh, the 2SB549 PNP types and the 2SD415s. This down here, by the way, is the original one that uh, we took out of the receiver. Well, now, you're probably saying, well, why did you buy so many of them? Well, that electronics store is such a highly professional place they can not even measure transistor gain, believe it or not. I came in there and said, well, I would like to have some, some matched pairs. And he was running around and going to the uh, display window with, uh, with a measurement equipment and said, well, we don't have any sort of meter that can do that. So, couldn't do it. So, I got three of every type, so that's why there are so many. You know, just, uh, I was just hoping that I could uh, hopefully come up with uh, two matching pairs, and it turns out I can. Unfortunately, not exactly the way I would like to. Of course, ideally, you'd have the, you know, what, what originally is supposed to be a complementary pair, that being 2SB and 2SD, or 2 uh, uh, BD and BD. Well, as you can see, I measured the uh, current gain using uh, the component tester. Those are all those numbers. And we got for the PNP, we got 2143. For the NPN, we got another 2143. Unfortunately, one being the BD140 and uh, the other ones being the 2SD415s. Um, I have also compared the uh, the forward voltages of the diodes. So you can see we got, uh, what is that, 639 millivolts, 644. These ones a bit lower, but not too far off at uh, 576 and 621. I guess I'm just going to risk it. I'm just going to put those in. We're just going to see what happens. And it's the next day. I didn't record anything else yesterday because I was disappointed. We now have all the driver transistors with almost the exact same current gain. We still have the problem. You've guessed it. 
it's still there still doesn't want to work so I've now gone ahead and I've uh, really uh, <laughs> I've really uh, been uh, messing about with the circuit quite a bit so uh, well let's just see if I can explain this a little bit now this is a quiet channel this is the loud channel I have measured uh, simply because it uh, was kind of convenient I actually uh, desoldered and measured these uh, transistors in the uh, what I believe is a differential amplifier the input stage so, so you can see for uh, for this one we got we got a very low value that that's kind of suspicious only 252 the other one 359 much higher the one behind uh, the slash is uh, the the forward voltage of the diode now up here we're getting uh, basically uh, much much nicer results I can put it that way uh, we have uh, for this one 307 for the other one 366 so much closer so that's kind of suspicious and the thing is it uh, it just remains like that it's suspicious is uh, see I basically I went through now uh, these transistors are only for uh, for protection purposes so they are not going to do anything hopefully <laughs> uh, anyway um, this transistor here uh, sets the uh, the quiescent current so that's not too important I did measure it because it was conveniently located um, but basically with with all the other transistors I measured the base voltages to uh, kind of have a, a bit of a cross comparison between the two channels and with the input stage I'm actually measured all connections always you know always in relation to ground of course um, so as we look at this now this transistor here it's all perfectly fine 1.74 volts just like up there camera doesn't want to focus here we go 1.74 that's the same. Uh, this transistor and that sets to quite some current minus 1.3. Down here it's minus 1.2. Now that could be because of the quiescent current adjustment. I did readjust the amplifier. It's all pretty well spot on. I actually uh, used the most precise meter that I have, which measures uh, even a few microvolts. So. Uh, that should be good um, okay so that's that uh, this up here uh, this is kind of <laughs> minus 44 volts interestingly only minus 42 volts up there now you have to uh, keep in mind this is uh, it's, it's uh, not the um, it's not a copy of uh, of each other like you know this is also this it's you know it's flipped around so whatever is down here is up there so keep that in mind this is the ground line on both sections we have up here on the base this is where it gets interesting we got 33 and a half millivolts for this one down here 71 millivolts twice as much so that's weird on this one 73 up here only 25 so there is definitely something going on the problem is I don't know what um, I can't really tell what sets the uh, the base voltage so um, yeah um, of course we have the the DC offset adjustment right here so that might be part of it maybe that this is so extremely low or something but um, with this thing I don't know there is a significant difference this is the one with low gain by the way so uh, that might be that 
Uh, on the emitter we have uh, 627 millivolts. Up there, consequently, only 500. Now then we have on the base, this is actually quite uh, quite close to each other. Uh, for this one we have minus 45.4 and then down here we have uh, minus 45.6 so that's like 200 millivolts worth of difference. For this one we got minus 42.8 there minus 44.9 so that's actually quite a bit of a difference there. So I don't know. Um, these obviously are coming pretty much straight out of the power supply so I also measured that but that is that's all pretty close. As you can see we got uh, 46, minus uh, 46, 45.8, 46 and minus 45.9. This one's a little off which is kind of weird because it's really just hooked up uh, in parallel uh, to the filter capacitors using these uh, thick wires right there. But uh, yeah that's basically where we are right now so the information you got is all the information I have. So if you have any kind of an idea regarding what I could do, tell me. I'm gonna wait like a week over the weekend and beyond that if we can't come up with a solution together I'm just gonna say screw it. Power amplifier is messed up and uh, we can't fix it. So, uh, well, thank you for watching. Thanks in advance for any ideas, of course. And uh, see you again soon.